So last time we had the tub out, we bound up the chain and it completely bent the rear axle. It destroyed the jack shaft. It destroyed a bunch of bearings, bearing mounts. Um, it twisted up the whole drivetrain. So it kind of sucks, but at the same time, I've been looking to a lot more stuff on this and I didn't want to take it apart while it was still running. So now it kind of gives me a, gives me a reason to kind of do the upgrades I wanted to do. I always wanted shocks. It has the little Springer coil spindle suspension on the front end, but it's still rigid in the rear and it's super hard on your back. And I have a dirt track in the backyard and you feel every little groove, every little bump. So I'm not too sure yet what I'm going to do in the rear when it comes to suspension and the front i was thinking about doing the typical springer kind of t-bucket front end but i like how light this thing is and i just think that a kind of like a single a arm in the front using the old the old truss here kind of as my front pivot and then a little trailing arm in back um i really think that that would uh that would work great um yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do in the back. I got to put some more idler pulleys in just to clear the tub on the bottom. But I guess I can just get started by kind of pulling everything apart and uh, seeing if we have some space for stuff.
All right. Well, this parts for suspension came in and it's uh it's been minus 16 all morning. I got no heat in the shop, but it's the only time I have to do this. So I guess I'm going to, uh, it's going to work in minus 16 and, um, see how far I can get and take a little breaks, but I'm pretty stoked to get the, uh, the front shocks put in. I, I've been trying to decide how I wanted to orient the actual coils, whether I wanted to go up and down, but I didn't like how much extra meat I was going to have to put on the, on the frame, um, to build the shock towers. So I was debating putting in kind of like a lowered style like that. And, uh, it should give me the same, the same angle. And I'm going to mount them in behind the radiator just to make it easy, keep it light. And, uh, I'll tack it all together. If it works, I'll, I'll keep it. These are pretty stiff shocks to be honest. So, I mean, I can't, I can't move them by hand. You can just, pushing down on them. I made a little, uh, little mock setup last night to see if I could compress them and, and I could, and they're, and they're pretty smooth, but I think I'm going to take a pretty small, small angle. So that's what I'm going to do. I already got some bushings made for the hinges for the A-arm. Um, so I'll show you guys how I, uh, how I make these. This is like a, just a DIY, brutally cheap and simple way to build bushings and, and uh, like oops, spindles, anything. I got a little tool that I use to, to assemble these and it's nothing more than, uh, than a, a half inch bolt and a half inch knot that's been drilled out. So I'll show you guys how I do that right now. So what I have is just some schedule 40 three quarter inch uh, sprinkler pipe. Cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. And I have half inch nuts and a half inch bolt. I've drilled one of the threads out of the nut so it slides perfectly on the bolt. And these happen to fit perfectly into this tubing. Like they almost press in. And so the, the one in back almost acts as just a, as a kind of like a, a bushing in itself. So we'll put this in here. We just put that flat like that. And what we're able to do is the top one that still has the threads on it. Let's get that thread down. And due to it's not DOM tubing, it's got a uh, it's got a seam weld on the inside, which will actually grab that nut. And we just thread it down till we get the depth that we want. This fine tune. I leave a little shoulder. So once I get the bushing all welded up and I clean this one off, I got two of them kind of half done here. Um, I drill the threads out just with a, just a half inch step bit and uh, it, it half inch doesn't quit. Uh, doesn't quite fit uh, the bolt. And so I just take a half inch square file on a drill. Here. Uh -huh. right. Just give it a quick clean.
So it's still sitting a little higher than I wanted, but I gave myself room to put another hole here and here, and that should give me uh, just a perfect amount. Um, I got a little bit of preload set right now, and it's actually working a lot better. I'll get those that mount off, new holes drilled, and then uh, back on, and that should finish the mock-up. And then I'll uh, I'll go back around and weld everything back to uh, kind of finalize all the welds. All right, so I add another hole. So let's see how that works. If not, I can always uh, cut this piece right in the center, and then like take them and like push them together. But I I think this is gonna work. The original plate that I had designed to go right in the center like that and so these holes are just a little bit more out than the maximum of this one that I had um, where it was sitting just a little too low so this should this should be it this should be it I shouldn't have to come back um, other than to uh, 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 make everything back together so let's see
All right, so that's uh, that's it for this video, I guess. Um, we got the front end done, except for some of the steering bits. I got to rebuild the uh, kind of the, the, the steering tower at the front, um, and then we're gonna get on to the back. I picked up some big, some big huge rod hens from Princess Auto, which is kind of like our tractor supply or Harbor Freight, and I'll be using these for the rear swing arm. We got a bunch more projects we got to do. We got snow scooters we're building. We got a bunch of mini bikes that we're putting back together and an old 330 Rotax snowmobile that we got to get back together. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, thanks for joining along and see you next time. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, uh,